Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this matter that has been raised by Honorable Chepkonga, Mr. Speaker, is a very, very fundamental and important issue. Mr. Speaker, this is a matter that was debated in this House in last Parliament. And we debated the whole afternoon. And that time, the matter was confined to the central bank, the regulations, the illegal regulations that the governor gave to the banks in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as you are aware, that under the new constitution, there are people in the executive or state bodies that are still operating under the old order that are not aware that there is a new constitution in this country that says anything that must have the, the force of law must be passed by this House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the havoc, some of the illegal uh, 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 regulations that have been used in this country, the havoc that they have caused in this country, Mr. Speaker, is immense, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, look at what has happened in the banking sector, for example. The central governor, bank governor issued uh, orders in form of a letter, which he calls it a regulation, that anybody who is banking with any bank who is putting money above one million or withdrawing, ordinary Kenyans, ordinary citizens who are doing their own businesses must write, must fill a form that requires the, 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 the customer to tell the bank where he has got the money from, if he's withdrawing, where he's taking it. Now, if you write, Mr. Speaker, that you are withdrawing this money to take to your house, and that information is leaked to a, a thug, what stops a thug from attacking you at night, Mr. Speaker? He knows the older man who has withdrawn the money he's taking. You have to fill in the form, there's somewhere you have to tell the bank manager where you are taking the money. Now, the older man or the old lady has told the bank manager, I am taking this money to my house, because that's the truth. She's not taking it anywhere else. That information is leaked to a third. They told, there is Mrs. Mary who has removed one million shillings and she has written here she's taking the money to her house. Why can't I just follow you to your house and rob you the money? Mr. Speaker, the central bank governor, the speaker by then, Honorable Justin Muturi, referred the matter to the delegated legislation, I think, and the finance committee. The central bank governor was summoned by parliament. He came here and he was told you must bring these regulations within 30 days so that the House can either approve or disapprove. What did he do mischievously? He went and hired, procured someone who can go to court and take him to court, sue him on behalf of the Central Bank. So that the whole matter, he comes back and says, subjudice, I cannot talk about it. He thinks we are fools. We know what he has done, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Because we represent Kenyans here, we must say the truth. He sued himself. So that he cannot be summoned by parliament. <laughs> that he cannot appear before a committee. I was in parliament by then. Mr. Speaker, and that is how the whole matter died for a whole three years, Mr. Speaker, until now the 13th parliament came into place. Mr. Speaker, when we saw here, the first day we appeared here, we saw to defend and uphold the constitution. Mr. Speaker, the constitution clearly says nothing can have the force of law unless it is passed in this house. It's as simple as that. So we want to tell those people, including banks, from the floor of this house, who are operating under illegal regulations, please stop it from today. There is no regulation that is enforced. That was a mere piece of paper that was given to you by the central bank government. It has no force of law. Parliament is telling you that those things are irregular, those things are illegal, and there are illegalities. Please don't force them on the Kenyan people. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, there is a reason why the Delegated Legislation Committee was put in place, Mr. Speaker. The committee is not in place in vain, Mr. Speaker. It has a chairman, it has members, and their work is to make sure that regulations come to them so that they, go, they look at them, they approve them, then they bring them or disapprove and bring it to the House, Mr. Speaker, so that all members can either approve it or disapprove it. Mr. Speaker, if this thing is not stopped, I can assure you there are many people, many cabinet secretaries, many state uh, organs or statutory bodies that will come up with their, own with, their own, with their own regulations, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is an affront to this House, Mr. Speaker. This is taking, usurping the powers of Parliament that was given to Parliament by the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. And that 
If what happens, if everybody now decides to do his own or our own things, Mr. Speaker, and don't follow the Constitution, I want to say that whoever is listening to us today in Parliament, Parliament is saying through the Speaker, who is ruling, God willing, that those regulations are irregular. Don't follow them. Ignore them, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I want to join uh, my two colleagues in expressing my concern also, Honorable Speaker. And this issue that the Honorable Chapkonga has raised goes